everyone and welcome to another episode here on the MI Gardener channel. I was just actually saving some seeds from this unique heirloom pumpkin here and uh, it's just it's a stunning blue pumpkin and a lot of times I get this question coming up in my inbox and it prompted me to turn on the camera while I was doing this and I'm just gonna be saving the seeds while I talk about seed saving and that is uh, the question is what should I be doing as a gardener? What is the one thing, if there's anything I can be doing as a gardener? And I always say this answer solely for the fact that if you're a, you just started deciding you wanted to garden yesterday, or you are a lifetime gardener and, and you know just about everything about gardening, what is the one thing that everyone in between and on both ends of the spectrum should be doing? And that is saving seeds. Saving seeds is so important, so important, because some scientists, depending on which sources you look at, I did a little bit of research before this so I could get some numbers, some hardcore numbers for you, and certain scientists say that 90% of the cultivated varieties we've ever grown have been extinct, or have gone extinct. So that is basically nine out of 10 varieties that we've had total have completely gone away. And we don't know what the repercussions of losing those varieties are. And it's really disheartening for me to realize that it's so easy to save seeds. I mean, here we are saving this pumpkin. Okay, this blue pumpkin. And let's say the let's say that this blue pumpkin has uh, some some really beneficial properties for powdery mildew. Let's say it's extremely resistant against powdery mildew. And we we just kind of say, well, it doesn't look orange. It's not round. It's really lumpy and it's frankly kind of hard to cut through. The, the kids probably won't have a good time cutting that at, at uh, Halloween. The meat doesn't taste all that great. Um, but, you know, I just don't think it's worth saving seeds from. It's just not a great pumpkin. And uh, it's not something that would sell. It would, it's not something that would sell at the market. But let's say that we all had that mentality, and we stopped saving the seeds from this blue pumpkin, and we basically favored a a more orange variety, a more sellable variety, a more marketable variety. And that marketable variety basically was the norm, and and slowly people stopped saving seeds from this blue variety here. And let's say, hypothetically speaking, this, problem, this might happen, might not happen, it happens quite frequently though. Let's say that powdery mildew becomes more resistant and it starts attacking the orange pumpkin because we've never bred it for disease resistance. We just bred it, we just bred the orange pumpkin because it was round, it had really good tasting flesh in pies and kids loved carving it and it was orange and that's the icon of Halloween so we might as well just grow the orange pumpkin and so this this disease resistance kind of creeps up and, or this, this this disease creeps up on these pumpkins that don't have good disease resistance let's say powdery mildew and all of a sudden the pumpkin market is devastated oh what are we going to do you know what what are we going to do to combat this powdery mildew that's running rampant? Well, if you were a smart seed saver, you would not have made this blue pumpkin go extinct because if you remember, it had really good powdery mildew resistance. So I always stress that, you know, that if you are a beginning seed saver or the most experienced seed saver, you can be doing your part to preserve genetic biodiversity because this pumpkin has different genetics than an orange pumpkin and somewhere down the line you might need it as a society. That's a very extreme thought but you might need those seeds to, tr to cross pollinate to make a more uh, powdery mildew resistant pumpkin and that's a very real thing that's happening. So that's one reason. Another reason is that just because it doesn't look good doesn't mean the seeds are not good or the flavor is not good. 
pumpkins have very nutritious seeds. And I would hate for there to be a, <laughs> a new discovery that, oh, you know that pumpkin we let go extinct five years ago? Well, its seeds actually have the potential to cause, uh, to prevent cancer and, and kill cancer cells, but darn it, we don't have the seeds because we didn't like the way it looked. So we stopped, we stopped saving seeds from it. And uh, well, now we gotta rely on the pharmaceutical industry to produce some drug that's identical to the seeds that were produced naturally from this pumpkin. Shoot, should have been a smart seed saver. You know, so those things happen. Those things happen and undoubtedly they have already happened since 90% of the varieties we've grown, we've just basically kicked to the wayside and said, go the way of the dinosaur, I don't care about you. And that's really unfortunate as a seed saver. Um, and then the last reason uh, that, I, that I really stress seed saving is that young gardeners can see the, the cycle of life. I, I think that's really a mesmerizing thing about gardening is that you can grow something. You can go to the grocery store, you can go to the farmer's market, you can, heck, you can get a seed packet and you can get seeds. You can grow that variety from those seeds and save the seeds again for next year. And it's really a free way of gardening. I mean, people always wonder, you know, how can I garden for free? How can I, um, how can I, how can I save money gardening? And that's really it. I mean, save seeds because if you don't have to buy them next year, that's one less expense you have. You know, you might have to buy more, uh, potting soil or seed starting trays or whatever, but that's a very minimal cost compared to the cost of seeds. I mean, before I started saving seeds, I would spend about $150, $200 on seeds every year, and that's pretty shocking. But now that I started saving seeds, I grow what I saved last year, and I really only spend maybe between $10 and $15 on seed packets just for a couple new varieties that I wanna try. But I know what I really liked from last year, and here's what I, here's going back to what I stated earlier. Even if I don't like it, I save the seeds because someone might like it later on. And I would hate to not have the seeds available if you want them. So I always save the seeds even if I don't like the varieties. But I know what I like from last year and I just happen to grow it. I still save the seeds from the varieties and I keep them on hand. It's not gonna hurt you to save them. I mean, what are you gonna have, I mean, another, Oh, another shoebox full of seeds? That's taking up way too much space. You know, there's there's far worse things you could hoard. So, um, so that's my reasoning. But uh, I hope you guys I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. I'm battling with this thick skin on this blue pumpkin, um, and uh, I, I just love I love the color and I love the uniqueness of it. Um, but uh, it definitely has thick skin. <laughs> so, um, so we're gonna. We're gonna continue battling with this thick skin. And uh, in, if you will, in the comments box below, let me know why you save seeds. I really love knowing why different people do different things. So let me know why you save seeds. And uh, I'd be curious to know <laughs> why, why you do it. So I think we are just about done with this pumpkin here and almost got all the seeds out but I will say that there is there is nothing quite like the feeling of pumpkin in the hands in the morning it's just a it, it's a feeling you all should experience um, and I was I, as I was doing this I was laughing because I thought to myself you know there's gonna be somebody coming along that's gonna it's gonna claim that pumpkin is this new anti-aging exfoliant and I see it so often on these like health blogs because I do I read it I read health blogs every once in a while to just see what's kind of new and trending and and whatnot and some of them is so funny that I mean not to tease them or anything but they they just <laughs> they make these claims that are just they're hilarious and uh and so <laughs> I was thinking, you know, someone's going to come along saying that they just, that some, some Swedish scientist discovered an anti-aging cure and it's rubbing pumpkin on your hands 
right after waking up in the morning. And that's really about how, how some of them sound. And uh, all the women are gonna run to the pumpkin patch and, and go buy these, these pumpkins and start cutting into them. And <laughs> their husbands are gonna walk home. They're gonna be hands deep in a pumpkin and the husband's gonna say, honey, what are you doing? I'm anti-aging, honey. I'm, I found this new cure for curing wrinkles. It's just rubbing pumpkin all over your face. Look, it's just, oh, it's so nice. Look at the wrinkles are gone. And I'll just, my, the husband, maybe me, hopefully not, will just sit there and say, oh, whatever, whatever makes you happy, dear, because not to say Cindy ever does that. I certainly almost hope that never happens because I'm not sure how I would react. <laughs> but I'd like to say it. I'd like to think that it was something along those lines. So I'll talk to you all later. Hopefully you all enjoyed. Uh, hopefully uh, laughed along and relaxed along because it was really not that eventful of an episode. But I think it's really important for us all to save seeds. So I thought it was important for me to at least turn the camera on while I was doing this since I had nothing better to be doing with my day anyway. So <laughs> I'll talk to you all later. Hopefully you all enjoyed. Hopefully you all are growing bigger going home. And uh, you know, hey, just exfoliate a little bit, you know? Just, oh wow, that does feel kind of good. Maybe there is a little something to that blog post I was reading. What, well, what are you doing? I'm anti-aging. <laughs>